Let's look at one more operation to do with latitude and longitudes. Okay, so let's add origin and destination latitude and longitude to flights. Okay, so the flights table right now has the origin airport and the destination airport. So now what we want to do is to add the origin and destination latitude and longitude to the flights. So which means we'll have to connect uh, the flights table to the airports table. And uh, instead of just getting the airport name, we'll have to get the airport la latitude and longitude. Okay, so we can do it. The, po the point here, the main point here is that uh, we have to add the, join the airports table twice. Once to the destination field uh, to get the destination details like latitude, longitude, etc. And once to the origin field to get the origin details. This is the key point. So we do flights left join airports and we first join uh, where the uh, flight's destination equals airport FAA and then to the result we do a left join again and do uh, again with the airports this time we say origin of this resultant thing right so this the, the, for the result of the first left join has an origin because it was uh, you know flights uh, so from the flights it has the origin so now we are joining the uh, FAA from airports to that. Okay. So what we are effectively doing is doing flights left join airports. And the result of that we are again doing another left join airports. The first left join was to connect the destination to the FAA. The second left join is to connect the origin to the FAA. Okay. So if you run this, you will notice that the resultant, uh, the result that is produced has two latitudes and longitudes, obviously, right? Because when you join first, you get one latitude longitude. When you join again, you get another latitude longitude. So let's take a quick look at the results. So I have actually run the uh, command here. The command, the, the, the code is right here. I have run it. Now, after I run it, let's see the results. So the results say, uh, Tibble, uh, 336,776 times 33. You know, obviously we've got the columns in flights. So we have now added one set of columns from airports and another set of columns from airports. So twice, so total uh, has come out to be 33. Uh, but the point to note is here that if you look at the columns which came in from the airport table, you see here name.x, which is the first time you added airports, you got the name, lat.x, lawn.x, alt.x, time zone.x, destination or distance.x or whatever the DST is. Right, so all of that uh, is coming from uh, from the first edition. Then you see name dot y, lat dot y, lan dot y, all of those. Right, so that is from the second time we added uh, we added the airport table again. So this is important. Uh, when you do a left join, you you know each time you left join, you can only add one table. So if you want to add many tables, you have to uh, join them one after the other. That's the important part. Now let's try to answer another important question, which is, does the age of a plane affect its uh, on-time performance? In other words, are older planes, uh, you know, do they accumulate more delays or do younger planes accumulate more delays? Whatever it is. Okay. So that's what we want to find out. Does the age of a plane impact delays? Okay. So to find this out, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to, uh, you know, we'll do a, a scatter plot of delays by age. Okay, so I'm taking flights and of course, you know, I'm going to consider arrival delays. So we are taking out anything where the, there is no arrival delay. Arrival delay is NA. So I'm saying filter by only, keep only those cases where uh, arrival delay is not NA. So I'm saying not is NA. The exclamation point is a not operator. So not is NA arrival delay. And then we are grouping by tail number, right, because we want to find out whether uh, you know, the planes which are older are somehow more delayed. So what we want to do is to group the uh, flights by tail number and for each tail number take the average of the arrival delay. Right, of course, each tail number is going to have done many flights. So let's say the particular aircraft, uh, tail number A, B, C, D, E, F, um, let's say that aircraft has made 150 flights overall during the time period for which we have the data. What we want to do is to take its average delays over all of its flights. Okay, so that's what we want to do. So for every individual aircraft, we want to find out its average arrival delay within the data, right? And then we want to, uh, 
you know, plot the arrival delay by the age of the aircraft. Okay, so that's what we are doing here. Summarize average delay equals mean arrival delay. So that's what we got now. For every tail number, now we have the arrival delay. But then we also want to join, uh, uh, we need to get the year in which the plane was made, right? That's what is going to determine the age for us, the year in which it was made. So now we are joining it to planes because planes is the table that has the year of manufacture. Okay, and we are, that is uh, to this result, this summarized result has tail number average delay. Okay, that's what it has. Now by tail number, we are joining the plane information. So now we'll have a resultant data frame or resultant table in which we have the year of manufacture, tail number, and average delay. And all we have to do now is to do a scatter plot of uh, average delay by year of manufacture. Okay, so that's what we are doing. So now we are jumping into ggplot. So put the year on the x-axis, put the average delay on the y-axis, average delay being what we just calculated, and then do a geom point. And just for effect, I'm also doing a geom smooth so that we can see the uh, smoothed line to see if there is any visible trend within that smooth line. Okay, so if you do that, the result you get is, is shown here. So here on the x-axis is the um, year in which the plane was made and on the y-axis is the average delay, right? This is for every point represents one unique aircraft, okay? So for that unique aircraft we see, and clearly there is no trend at all, right? You can see that this line, the, the smooth line is almost horizontal, okay? In fact, it dips a little bit towards the, uh, you know, towards the end indicating uh, probably newer aircraft, uh, but there could be a lot of other factors playing in here. So, for example, it is possible uh, that the newer aircraft are all big, uh, you know, long-haul aircraft which are put in certain routes where the delays are less. We don't know. Okay, so that's what you're seeing here. Of course, you will see some stragglers with large delays and so on. You may think, oh, why is it that there were no high delays here at all, whereas here you're starting to see high delays. Well, it's just that uh, there are very few old aircraft flying, with lots of new aircraft flying. So obviously the variability is going to increase as you have many more planes operating. Okay, so so that's really uh, what you're going to see here. Okay, uh, so clearly I think we can answer and say uh, really the age of a plane doesn't seem to impact delays. Okay, of course that's what we would expect. Uh, uh, if it was the case that the older planes have more delays, then that would be a serious problem because uh, it, it's you know. It's because of mechanical issues or whatever it is, they obviously won't be flying them if there were those kinds of serious problems. Let's look at uh, one more aspect. Till now, we've been joining uh, tables only by a single field, if at all. Right? We have not had situations where we join tables by multiple fields. And let's look at that. So let's say we want to add the origin weather data to the flights. Right? In other words, uh, the flight is originating from a particular airport. We want to include the weather information at that point, at the time of scheduled time of departure. So, for example, we may want to do some analysis of flight pattern delays and connect them to weather and so on. So that we may want to do that. We are not going to do that, uh, but we may want to add the origin weather data in order to be able to do those kinds of analysis. Okay. So, uh, so we are simply let's say as a first shot, we just add, uh, join the two tables, flights left join on weather. Okay, or we could just do even flights inner join on weather. Okay, in fact, inner join might actually be better because it will leave out situations where, uh, you know, there is no weather information or any such thing. Okay, so if we did this, and if you run this code, you'll see the result is coming like this, right? So not the complete result, but right on top of the results, you see it says, I'm joining by year, month, day, origin, hour, and time hour. Okay, so uh, now if we remember back to our original picture where we showed the connections, within that year, month, day, origin and hour, these were only the fields that uh, were shown as common fields with, uh, with flights, right, or common fields between flights and weather. But it turns out that there's one more common field between flights and weather because we didn't specify what fields to join by and it has joined by all of these simply because there was a field called time hour in the weather data. There's also a field called time hour in the flights data. 
okay and because we didn't specify to join by which fields it also included that in the join right but of course this is wrong because the time hour uh, field has a completely different meaning in the two tables in fact if you look at the description of the data you'll see that time hour for in the flights data refers to uh, you know the time uh, the scheduled departure time whereas time hour in the weather data talks about when the when the weather measurement was actually made okay which are very different uh, so therefore uh, ideally what we would like to do is to only join by these fields and not include this which means uh, several things first is that we have to explicitly specify the field on which field or fields on which we are joining the tables and secondly we have to indicate many fields which we haven't done so far okay so this is not the uh, you know like i said this we shouldn't be using this particular field at all and this is a wrong way to join uh, weather data to flights because uh, we are adding a spurious field and it's not going to give us the correct result because the meaning of time hour in the two tables is very different so to actually do it correctly we have to join on only the fields other than that last field that i had indicated so we are going to say flights left join weather and in the by i'm going to show you how to indicate many fields right i'm going to say by c equals year uh, c of year equals year okay and then month equals month in other words what we are saying is the year of the flights table is equal to year of the weather table month of the flights table equal to month of the weather table and so on it just so happens that uh, many of these fields have the same name so it's just repeating on both sides however uh, and of course even the origin uh, is actually the same right so all the fields have the same name but you are still having to indicate all of them explicitly simply because there is another field which has the same name but is of a, uh, it should not be used in the join right so this is what is showing you the syntax of how to join by several fields so we are seeing how to specify only the columns that we want now let's take a look at how to add destination weather uh, data to flights so it's going to be very similar to adding to the origin except there is only one small difference so instead of saying origin equals origin we're going to say destination equals origin because in the flights table that field is called the the the, the dest the field is called dest the destination airport is called dest and of course in the weather table uh, the airport is still origin so this is what we do of course if you run this you won't get any results that is because Uh, as i had indicated earlier your weather data doesn't have weather information for destination airports okay so this is not actually going to give us any meaningful results but i just want to show you the syntax to do that just note the fact that here you would say dest uh, so i haven't given you the code for this simply because uh, it doesn't make sense that information doesn't exist in the weather table now Uh, I had earlier shown you the syntax of how to do some of these operations with just regular R, uh, and here we are showing the thing. There is a function called merge with uh, within the standard R base. When it says base colon colon, that means a standard R. There is a function called merge which can do some of these join kind of operations. So if you wanted to do inner join, you can say merge x y. Uh, that's what it means. It will take all the columns which are common, which have a common name, and it will do that. Left join looks like this, and so on. okay but now that we know this syntax it's much more flexible much more easy and much more readable we will not worry about this part at all okay so let's see what code we can write to find the most popular destinations in other words uh, the destinations to which we have the most number of flights okay and again remember our flights data is only talking about flights originating in one of the three new york airports and going to all other places so we want to find which are those destinations that have the maximum number of flights coming in from new york okay so again the way just think about how you would do this you've got the flights data you've got all the destinations all we want to do is for every destination we want to count how many flights there the flights are going to that destination okay we don't care which airport they took off from any one of these three airports but we want to count how many flights are flying uh, are operating to a particular destination within our entire data set okay so there are two ways to do is one is we could group it and then we could summarize it 
uh, by counting, right? We can say summarize equals n, uh, but count is even a more easy function. So that's what we're going to do. So top dust is the new uh, data frame we are creating, saying flights, pipe it to count, destination, sort equals true, right? In other words, we want to count it by destination, uh, but we also want to sort it by uh, order, right? So in which case it's going to sort uh, in actually in ascending order, okay? And then we say head 10, okay? So let's see how this code works. Okay, so we run it and let's see here top dust what what does it look like okay so you can see here in top dust we are seeing uh, you know it is sorting and we see that 17,280 flights to uh, Chicago uh, O'Hare and 17,215 to Atlanta etc so that's the thing uh, the sorted way now when you say head 10 basically what you're saying is sort it and print out the top 10, the first 10 rows. Okay, so that's what it did. Now notice that the sort equals true, uh, by default, sorted it now by descending order in this particular case. Okay, so head 10 was to give us the top 10 uh, rows from the result, right? So notice what we did here. Uh, the count is a very useful function. You want to count how many values occur for a particular uh, for a particular uh, you know data value how many rows occurred for a particular data value then you can use count so here what we are saying is take flights take the destination column for each unique value of the destination column count how many occurrences of that there are just counting we are not summing we are not uh, taking the average nothing just counting you know for example if the if one destination let's say is uh, atlanta right we are just seeing in how many rows does Atlanta occur as the destination? That's it. Okay, so it's going to think, take a look at every unique destination and count how many times it occurred. And we are also saying, show me the results in sorted order. And by default, it's sorting actually in descending order. It's showing the maximum value first and the rest uh, lower. And then, of course, this is going to have this, uh, you know, when you do flights count by destination, you're going to have obviously as many rows as there are destinations but we are interested only in the top destinations so we are saying uh, of, uh, just show me of what you found just show me the 10, 10 top 10 rows okay so top dust is going to have only 10 rows now as a result of all this okay so that's it this is the complete result of the top 10 uh, destinations now we want to find out Let's take a look at only those flights which are going to the most popular destinations. So clearly what we can do is take the flights table and join it with top dust that we just found. Okay. Or we can do filter destination in top dust, dollar dust. Okay. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to simply join and then you will have only the, uh, do an inner join. So you will have only those flights which went to the top destinations. Okay, so let's try this out. So uh, we can do this flights, right? So that's one way to do it. This is the code that I've given you, but we could also do this. Inner join top desk. Uh, we can do by equals dust. So this gave us 141,145. That gave us 141,145. Okay, so the results were exactly the same. So you could have done it this way also by doing a join. In fact, this looks like uh, what I just showed you here. This looks like an easier approach than the first approach but both of them do the job okay uh, but the point is that this approach that we did here destination in top desk dollar desk uh, works well for this case but does not generalize well when we need to use many columns right so this destination filtering worked for one single column but how about 
multiple columns. Okay, so that is where semi join works very well. It's sometimes called as a filtering join. In other words, what we want to say is join the two tables and keep only those uh, that match. So, for example, let's take a look at this flights semi join top desk. Okay, so it's so much easier than uh, what we did earlier. Right, so we just do semi join top desk. What we are saying is keep only those flights for which there is a match in top desk. Okay, and obviously the common fields between these two are only desk, so we don't need to worry about any other fields. So basically, what it'll do is flights for which the desk happens to be in top desk, only those will be kept. Okay, but the beauty here is in case these two uh, uh, these two tables or these two tables had multiple common columns, this would still have worked, whereas our earlier approach would not have worked well. Okay, so that's the thing. And of course, this is just, uh, uh, to, to put it differently, this is just a short uh, shorthand for the second approach that we wrote about earlier.